Greetings, this is August 11th. This is a photograph sent to me by a friend up in the Bridge Lake area looking west at the Flat Lake Fire Zone. Uh, it was a perfect blue sky day for many, but if you were downwind from one of these fire zones, you may have seen a lot of smoke and haze. It looks like volatility has ticked up a notch as we've had a couple days of warmer weather, some winds coming in from the northwest. We're looking at the White Rock Lake fire zone. This is yesterday's infrared and now today's. There's quite a few more infrared showing up on the southeast perimeter of this fire. Uh, winds have come in from the northwest and we can see it pushing towards Okanagan Lake in the lower right hand portion of the screen. I'm taking off all the satellite information except for the VIIRS Suomi so we don't see duplicate hotspots. We can concentrate on where the most recent data was collected from. This is the Monte Lake area and we see that uh, controlled diagonal patch to the west of Monte Lake. Uh, they're also up in the Paxton Valley and a couple of spots that stretch east. I'm not seeing really too much movement around Ingram Creek that's to the southwest of Falkland, uh, so I'm not seeing an approach of the fire towards Falkland. Zooming into the Monte Lake area, here we can see those uh, hot spots that are north of Highway 97, just to the northwest of Monte Lake, and those two that have gone eastward along the Paxton Valley. I'm switching over to the VIIRS radiative scan. Those light colored areas are where the most intensity is. That's where the fire line is the hottest. So we're zooming in. We're looking west of Kalini Beach. Uh, we can see the fire zone there. It's about two kilometers west of Winchester Road at the top of Kalini Beach area. There's also a link to the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System in the description below. Uh, that might give you more detail and they use M3 hotspots that triangulate the position of the hotspots a little better. Here we're zooming into Kalini Beach and we can see that activity to the northwest. Winds have been coming strongest this afternoon. Uh, they'll taper off a bit, come from the west, though it'll still be breezy. Then tomorrow, winds could actually shift and start coming from the northeast and the east. This should start to happen about uh, 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. Uh, they'll come strongest from the east. Then in the evening, they switch back from the west and turn again on Saturday and start coming stronger again from the southwest. So it looks like a lot of variation in wind direction over the next few days. If we pull out, we can see that trend over today was all coming from the northwest right down the central portion of the province. The satellite uh, imagery confirms the wind direction. Here we're looking at the White Rock Lake fire zone. We see those streams of smoke uh, heading eastward over Okanagan Lake. And if you were in Lake Country, this is what the sky may have looked like for you today. Whereas if you were just a few miles south in Kalamalka, this is what the sky looked like. So it really depended on your proximity and whether or not you were lucky enough to avoid that smoke trail coming off these fire zones. We're moving eastward now to the Tremont Creek fire zone. Uh, this has gone north of Tunkwa Lake towards Savannah. We are seeing that cluster on the top of Mount Savannah. And here is the satellite imagery uh, showing the smoke direction. So chances are the wind actually aided in pushing that fire away from the north perimeter. And zooming out, we see both fire zones, uh, White Rock Lake towards the center of the screen, Tremont Creek over on the upper left-hand side, and this uh, band of scalloped clouds. Uh, everything is flowing from the northwest down to the southeast. Jumping down to the lower Arrow Lakes, the Nelson area, there was fewer infrared showing on today's scans. Looking at the fire east of Oliver and Osius, we still see intensity on that northeastern flank, and there are still hot spots showing up in the woods to the west of Mount Baldy. Manning Park showed reduced activity closer to the highway, that's the uh, crow's nest number three. It, most of the activity was concentrated in these clusters at the northwest sector of the fire zone. 
The southeastern flank of the Lytton fire zone is still showing activity with clusters there. That's displayed at the top of the screen. And then down towards the bottom of the screen, that is halfway between Merritt and Hope on the Coquihalla. Still lots of activity there. And it looks like the southern flank and the northeast flank of that fire are approaching the highway or still active near the highway. That's south of Kingsvale around the Brookmere area. We've moved up to the area around Flat Lake. That's uh, closer to the top of the screen. But over on the right-hand side, we can see the Bonaparte Park. This is in the Sparks Lake fire zone. And we can see some infrared approaching close to the western side of Bonaparte Park. Also, there's still activity over on the Pavilion Fire. That's lower left-hand side. The Flat Lake fire zone closer to the top of the screen center does appear to have less activity on the southern flank. However, the northern flank is showing a number of hotspot clusters as well. There's one spot that's still on the east side, uh, closer to Highway 97. The western perimeter of this fire is showing a couple of hot spots at the outer perimeters west. And if we go west of the Fraser River, that fire near Gang Ranch is also showing increased infrared activity that we didn't see over the last couple days. As the skies get clearer, the temperatures get warmer, and those winds are drying things out, uh, bringing some smoldering fires into blaze situations. So we have to be very careful if we are downwind of these fire zones. There were strong northwest winds coming over the Flat Lake fire zone this afternoon and this should continue for all day tomorrow then wind should shift on friday and start coming from the south and then shift again and come from the west on saturday here again we're looking at that haze on the horizon looking westward over the flat lake fire zone we see that smoke flowing to the southeast. If we go to the Begby Cam, we can see at the top of the left-hand portion of the screen, there is smoke and haze flowing over top of us in a southeasterly direction. This camera is pointing north. So there were clear skies for many. It really depended on your location. Here we're looking at the Monte Creek brake check. This is north of the fire zone, looking to the southeast, and it looked like a reasonably clear day here and to the southeast of the fire zone. This is Kelowna, the bridge heading across to the east side of the lake. We're looking eastwards and a lot of haze, a lot of particulate matter in the air. And here is the source uh, watching the southeast flank of the White Rock Lake fire zone. We will have to be vigilant overnight watching those northwest winds until tomorrow about 2 p.m. when there could be a wind shift coming in from the northeast and then on Friday hopefully those eastern breezes show up and blow this fire back on itself. Thank you very much for watching. Again things have heated up with uh, increased temperatures, uh, winds drying out the situation coming from the northwest so we do want to watch out for these fire zones. They can move quickly. Uh, we're still getting winds from the northwest. Please do check out the links in the description below for the latest updates and the ground reports from BC Wildfire. Be safe and keep your nose to the breeze.